My name is Jan Hansen, and I'm the Executive Director of Legatum Institute. And we're delighted to be welcoming Congressman Holding here, who's the representative for North Carolina. And just a few words about your journey to Congress. I understand that you've been in Congress for two years now, but that you were a US attorney before that. And how did you come to politics? Yeah, well, the, I'm you know, in the middle of my second term in Congress now. And um, the US attorney uh, position, there are 94 US attorneys around the United States. You're appointed by the president, and you serve at his pleasure. You handle all the litigation, criminal and civil litigation. And when I was finishing up that job in June, July of 2011, I was going back into the private sector, uh, going back to practice law. And some friends came to me and said, you know, it's, it's, there's a good opportunity to serve in Congress. They had redrawn the districts in North Carolina and the sitting member of Congress had decided to retire. So it was an open seat. Mm. And I thought to myself, um, it's an incredible time in not only the history of the United States, but of the world. And um, it would be a magnificent privilege to be a part of mm -hmm. that. Um, America is at a crossroads for the first time since World War II. Uh, a majority of people don't believe that the next generation will have it as well off as the current generation. Yeah. And that's a, a terrible shame. Yeah. And I think really it's in the next four, six years that America at this crossroads determines whether we're going to be the aspirational entrepreneurial nation uh, that made America great mm -hmm. or we're not. So mm -hmm. I'm happy to be in that fight mm -hmm. um, right now in the United States Congress. Mm -hmm. And as, as part of the the drivers of the aspirational reinvention, uh, what would you say the main drivers are? Because here at Legatum, we're most interested in looking at prosperity in its widest sense. Is that, is that something you also um, look at when you're looking at the aspirational levers and drivers? Oh, absolutely. The, um, you know, a society that's not aspirational, I think, is, has lost its way. Mm. And in the United States, I think the inhibitors to having an aspirational society. Um, you know, we have too much government bureaucracy. The, um, you know, the government stands in the way of prosperity in every which way you turn. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a recent study that came out and said that over the last six uh, years, we've lost hundreds of thousands of small businesses in America, mm -hmm. and even more folks who are employed by small businesses. And as you may know, 80% of Americans are employed by small businesses. 80%? 80%. No, I didn't know that. And um, so... Um, so entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. And the, enabling small, medium-sized enterprises right, is probably at the wellspring. Right. Well, that's, that's the driver. That's the driver. Of prosperity. Yeah. And uh, that's the driver of yeah. an aspirational nation, I yeah. believe. And, and the committee, uh, the, you know, the Ways and Means Committee that you operate on, uh, could you tell me what they're saying about this? I mean, I'm, I'm particularly interested in the tax angle because, of course, tax has, a, has an effect on prosperity of a nation as oh, well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I believe and my colleagues believe that it is time for comprehensive tax reform in America. The last time we had comprehensive tax reform was in 1986. Right. Uh, the tax code has grown too burdensome, too cumbersome, 70,000 pages long. <laughs> Longer the, than ours. <laughs> yeah. It costs Americans $200 billion a year to comply with the tax code. Right. That's not to pay the tax, that's just to comply with the tax. Right. The, um, and that's, that's, um, that's a terrible fact. And do you have a view on FATCA that you could share with us? Because I understand from you know the British press that this is quite a, a burdensome thing, not just for Americans. Sure, FATCA is... Um, as you know, one of the aspects of it that Americans living abroad uh, have to disclose to the Internal Revenue Service all of their assets. The, um, and if you're an American living at home, you disclose your income. Mm -hmm. the, there's a lot of difference between disclosing assets and disclosing income. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's an unfair burden. Um, it's certainly been a terrible burden on financial institutions who are charged with ensuring that um, fact it's complied with. Uh, it's cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And as a result, 
you know, there are a lot of financial institutions who refuse to do business with American citizens living abroad. Yeah, um, so, yeah. And so I think as a component of tax reform, um, probably the first component that we're going to be able to address kind of as a down payment on comprehensive tax reform is international tax reform and switching the United States system from a worldwide system of tax to a territorial system of tax. Right. And, uh, is that what I understand, a citizens base to residential base? Is that the same thing? Or? Right, right. It's, it is, um, you know, right now, the United States, one of the few countries in the world, um, I believe we're in company of Cuba and North Korea, <laughs> uh, that tax the worldwide income of citizens and um, U.S. businesses. Right. And it's an unworkable system. Um, as a result, there's some $2 trillion of corporate profits from U.S. corporations that are, I would call, say, trapped right. overseas, but they won't repatriate them to pay right. the uh, minimum 35% tax. Uh, right. it's, a, you know, it's become an unworkable system. It adds right. volumes to the code because there are all different ways that uh, you don't repatriate that income and right. when you do and how you do it in such a way. So if we move to a territorial system, um, the, you know, we won't have that burden. And right, you know, right now, uh, we're facing something in the United States called base erosion. Mm -hmm. So base erosion is when U.S. businesses are purchased by uh, foreign companies mm -hmm. and that headquarters is moved you know, overseas. Right. So that's a loss of tax base, hence yeah. base erosion. And in the last number of years, we estimate that we've lost some $600 billion worth of U.S. assets to base erosion. Right. Um, if our uh, corporate tax structure was in the range of you know, other developed countries, mm -hmm. you know, the 20 some odd percent, 20, yeah. um, it's estimated that we would have gained about $150 billion in assets inbound to the United States. Right. Um, so this big spread there. Yeah. So, uh, that being said, if we switch to a territorial system, um, in um, many regards, uh, FACTA is rendered obsolete. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. Uh, well, I, I suppose the most interesting thing to um, a, a global audience at this moment is your view on what's going to happen in the presidential elections. <laughs> um, do you have a prediction? Is there something you can share with us? I, I assume it's a fast-moving feast and it it's changes It's fast-moving and it's well over a year away. Yeah. The, you know, there are going to be many twists and turns to this. But I think the takeaway from what we see right now from the field and from the rhetoric coming from uh, both sides of the aisle is uh, Americans of all persuasions are frustrated mm -hmm. and they're angry mm -hmm. and they want a change. Right. Um, right. And I think you hear that from uh, the Republican candidates, the Democratic candidates, and the Socialist candidates. Yeah. So. Well, it's a connection between the people and the democratic process and the leaders, right. isn't it? And it seems uh, across the world that seems to be breaking down as, as w you know, the people get disassociated from the democratic right. process, and um, it usually involves, um, particularly uh, in some of the emerging markets, it, 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 that disassociation leads to that frustration. Yeah. Right. Well, we look forward to um, hearing your talk uh, later on this evening, but in the meantime, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you.